What's going on everyone? This is Rikio and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be looking at my top 5 NeoVim plugins. If you do enjoy what I'm putting out here, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe like 5 of you did 2 weeks ago when I put on my new NeoVim video. If you haven't seen that one so far, it's just about me still talking about why I prefer NeoVim over VS Code. And if you'd like to go check that out, be sure to click on the top right corner where you can see the annotation there or right below the like button in the description. Of course, links to all of these plugins will be in the description as well so you'll be able to check all of them out let's go so the first plugin is called sneak which essentially allows you to navigate and traverse your code really quickly and easily for this one it actually goes to the first two characters you type in when you activate the plugin so i activate the plugin using s and let's say i want to go to this call account and there's lots of options of these so we need to look at a specific one and we just put our cursor over there and just do co and it highlights them all for us now we want to go to that one and you can see that that is capital T to for the shortcut to go there and just brings us there. By the way, if you don't know what this code is, you can actually check out my whole course on tic-tac-toe for Python. It's not really a course actually, it was just me logging down what I did and this is basically going to explain all that code. So the next plugin is going to be Vimix, which is a Tmux based plugin that is essentially going to open up a lower window on the bottom to run your code. I'll show you this right now. Let's say I want to run this file called main.py and you can see in the bottom I've invoked the vimix run command which is just going to be python3 main.py and i'll just run that and you can see that's the tic-tac-toe board the great thing about this is let's say i want to control c out of this and i want to run that command again i just do run last command which you see is the command that played and you it just starts the whole thing all over again which is really awesome so if you're one of those people who don't use tmux use tmux i don't I'm not sure what to say there. The next one is going to be Telescope, which I actually covered in my NVIM versus VS Code video. Of course, you can click on the top right corner just to check that one out. But essentially, this is all this is going to do is it's a really efficient and really clean fuzzy finder. So I mapped the find file to FF, which is essentially going to, which is leader FF, I meant to say. And it's essentially just going to search from your top level directory uh, or the .git directly directory, I believe. That's going to be seeing all your files. And what's nice about this plugin is it's in a nice little window. And you can actually see a preview of that file on the right side. So let's say I want to find like another a another HTML file. Of course, now I can see all the HTML files once I type in HTML. And I can scroll through them with the arrow keys, which is really nice. See exactly which file I'm looking for. So basically, this plugin just makes it easier for you to understand why you would want to go to a specific code place. And this plugin also has other features that like grep search or buffer search. The next plugin is actually very similar, which is called nvim tree. It's a file explorer and you could do all sorts of operations like rename a file. And the great thing about these is these keystrokes are mapped perfectly to the operation names, I'd say. So if you want to copy a file name, you do Y. If you want to copy the file path, you do capital Y. If you want to rename, you do R. If you want to delete, you do D. It's just so intuitive and it has a whole truckload of features that I probably don't utilize, but you guys can utilize as well you can navigate directories and open up files if i were to add a file called random.txt this is a popular file and just adds it and i can just open it it makes it really simple i'd say before we get to my top plugin i'd like to give a few honorable mentions the first honorable mention goes to git gutter which essentially allows you to see changes in your code what's been changed what's been deleted what's been added and it's very simple it's just in the, in the left column of the Vim window. So if I were to change this section to like say S or something, which is kind of weird, and it didn't update for me right now, but if you were to run git gutter, then it should update and just say that that file was changed or that line was changed, I should say. And if I were to put that back, of course, it didn't update again because this is being weird on me today. But yeah, it essentially is going to keep updating as you create your code base. The next one is going to be highlighted yank. So I don't really know sometimes where my cursor is when I'm yanking things. Of course, I could just look, but if I'm a little too fast sometimes. So the great thing about yank, it just tells you exactly what you've copied by just highlighting it. So let's say I want to copy this whole section. I just do Y and then oh, le closing curly brace, which just means copy the next chunk. And it did that for me, it just highlighted it. And now I have confirmed that I've actually copied it. So it makes everything really awesome. The last one is something we all take for granted, auto save. So I don't like to save my files directly. I like to just do it as soon as I'm done a keystroke. 
And with Vim, you're always ending with these keystrokes. So of course, an autosave plugin like the one I have right here, where it says autosave, saved at this time, is going to come real handy. So my favorite NeoVim plugin so far is NeoVim LSP. NeoVim 0.5 just came out, which is an awesome update for the community. So that actually improves my workflow a whole bunch. So if you don't know what NeoVim LSP is, it just means language server protocol, and it essentially analyzes what you're typing and what could go there, I'd say. And it does a few more other things, but that's mostly what I use it for. I also have it with other plugins like uh, NVim Comp, I believe, which is a completion plugin that automatically completes as you type. Here's a quick example. So I want to create a div here. I just type in div, and you can see that we have three options there. We have div, div hash, or div dot. So div hash essentially is just going to be div with an ID and a class, and div dot is just going to be div with a class. That can It automatically fills up or allow and puts me into insert mode and selects that bunch of text for me to actually edit. It's very awesome and it has a few awesome in snippets inside as well, like let's say the A tag. So if I do A, I do tab, and you can see it has all of its targets laid out. It automatically has a target underscore score blank, which just means it opens in a new tab when you click on that anchor tag. Of course, you don't have to know HTML for any of this tutorial. I'm not getting at that or anything. I'm just saying how awesome these snippets are that are from the open source community or from Microsoft with their VS Code LSP integrations. Of course, I missed tons of plugins that I have installed on my init.vim, but today's video wasn't about focusing on the basics that I needed. It was about focusing on those things that really improve my workflow and that I use or maybe aren't aware of that I use every day. If some of these helped you, be sure to like this video and comment. Like I said, of course, I'll be making a lot more of these videos. So to stay up to date with my content, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get updated regularly. Thanks so much for watching till the end of this video. It really means a lot to me. I'll see you guys in the next one.